Rio Hill. I get to actually use some tactics this stage at the menus during the actual Civil War. I've placed Johnston back in charge of 1st Corps, and you may notice an odd arrangement of troops in the 1st Division. This is going to be one of those stages where part of your force comes in as reinforcements mid-battle, and assuming you didn't deploy any of them immediately, the 6 brigades of reinforcements you'll get are the 6 brigades that make up 1st Division. So yes, I plan on using my cavalry this fight. As to what makes this a good stage for them, let's jump in. Our supply station on Rio Hill, a few miles north of Charlottesville, is under attack. We've spotted numerous enemy cavalry approaching, and they are dismounting, preparing to attack us from all directions. The Union cavalry is equipped with advanced weaponry, and is better trained than ordinary infantry. So we have to use our best troops to withstand their assault. Those supplies are desperately needed for our armies fighting in Virginia. Protect them at all costs. 25 brigades, huh? You don't say. Large numbers of Federal Cavalry are approaching our supply station near Charlottesville. They should belong to Stoneman's Cavalry Corps that is raiding Eastern Virginia. We have a few brigades located here that can stop those Yankees. A courier has been dispatched to recall our detachments operating to the southwest. They will return as soon as possible to aid us in the defense. This stage has woods, open fields, towns, roads, river crossings, all great for tactical combat and maneuver. A shame that we can't use it since we only get four brigades. So, the stage. With only four brigades, we need to be extra judicious with our movements. The stage intro said that we need to bring in our most skilled troops, so I'll be deploying one sniper infantry and three scrub teams. Oh, but don't worry, one of them will be the scurbs. And I'll be deploying them like this. The sniper group will be here and be the most mobile of the groups, moving around to take shots wherever he can. The scurbs will be this team in the housing cover and all three of the non-snipers will start the stage by popping out a detachment to stand in these areas, so as to cover all around us. There are defensive points around this area, and their bonus kinda sucks, but you can choose to use them if you want, so that any given brigade or detachment ends up covering a wider area than they normally would if just standing around. And how are we expected to fight off 25 brigades with just four? The answer is this. The enemy force is made up of three mid-sized cavalry squads, four small cannon batteries, and 18 skirmish teams. No infantry at all. This doesn't mean it's an easy fight, mind you, as they can be in many places at once, but it does mean we have numerical parity. We just can't let them panic us via flanking shots or mass charges. So if any given unit ends up getting heavily focused, send the sniper infantry and general to back them up. Also, pack your wagons in the very center on hold ground orders. They make juicy targets and we want them as protected as possible. The enemy's cavalry will start in the top left, but as soon as they make their first contact, they tend to fall back and then move just about anywhere. The enemy cannons will be in these three spots, but it will take them a while to move up into shooting range of your forces. And the skirmishers will be just about all over the place though the order they tend to engage you in is fairly consistent. So, how about our reinforcements? They will approach from the bottom left when the main clock reads 610, but getting them to the fight isn't as easy as a straight line. 99 out of 100 times, the enemy will have both cavalry and skirmishers in position, preventing them from just joining the depot defenders. And this is where our cavalry gets to be useful. As I've said it, I will receive one infantry, two mid-range cannons, and three cavalry teams as reinforcements, but they will operate in two separate teams, the cavalry and everyone else. The everyone else's team's job is to get the cannons to the depot. Once there, they and our existing infantry will no longer fear attacks from skirmishers in any number. There are two ways to do this. One is to send the entire force to go and retrieve them, and then everyone comes back together. 
but that method works better if you have a lot of infantry in map, and I chose to bring three cavalry squads instead. The other method is to have the infantry take up a position somewhere in here. The houses are ideal, but your position is going to depend on where the enemies are. Split a detachment to cover the top, and pull the cannons in close, and then just have them hold out. Enemy skirmish teams in the open won't last long should they choose to assault this. And once you've beaten a few enemy skirmish squads down, you can start sliding up and around, with your infantry keeping to the trees and the cannons moving faster in the grass. The cavalry gets to run around and busticate the enemy artillery. As soon as they get in map, they will run over and flatten this one. Then they will hold here for just a bit to make sure the enemy doesn't flank the other reinforcements from the south, before heading to the south map border themselves, running all the way to the east, and hitting the next two, hopefully, undefended cannon batteries from behind. Then, moving to the east map edge, and north, to see if they can get safely in behind the last battery. If you get your cannons to the map center, and remove all the enemy cannons, this map becomes a cakewalk. As usual, the three hour battle timer is just a suggestion. I don't have the exact hard end handy, but I know it's at least 12.30. So once you stop taking cannon hits yourself, you can, if desired, just have your own guns beat up Union troops with impunity while finding them by having skirmish detachments running around, or by sweeping the entire map with your whole force, whichever you choose. Before I begin, I do want to note, as and after the cavalry teams are sweeping the cannons off the map, they may come across enemy skirmish or cavalry teams and it's very tempting to charge into them as well. But is that a good idea? The answer is, against enemy cavalry, not likely, as they can kite you around unless you manage to corner them. But against enemy skirmishers, it comes down to if they have backup. If you find a single enemy skirmish team, then the three pack of cavalry squads can easily shatter them with a combined charge, and probably only take a single volley of return fire for their trouble. But if a unit has even a single other skirmish team backing them up, then your cavalry squads will end up on the receiving end of multiple volleys, and cavalry are just not designed to survive multiple volleys. So, how can you tell if a skirmish team, which are known for their stealth, is by itself? Good question. It's a high risk, high reward to be sure. But if you just can't make a reasonable guess, then I'd advocate to have the cavalry continue to deal with the cannons instead. Later on, once the map's center is fully secure, you can start dispatching skirmish detachments of your own to assist with scouting, and then you can make better choices.
The skirmish teams have fallen back. I can try to get my reinforcements swinging around to the camp now. I'm going to swing the cavalry team that is closest to these cannons around the long way. With any luck, the artillery will try to keep turning to face the swing team and end up not getting a single shot off.
and that ends the enemy cannons and apparently started everyone on the other side into a charge frenzy. That's not going to end well for them. Well, they got in range of my cannons and even managed to take a single one down, and it only cost them an entire cavalry brigade and most of a skirmish team. Not sure that was worth it, though I guess at this point it's not like they have a lot of avenues to victory either. I'll start spreading out skirmish teams to try and get spotting information now, while my cavalry force runs this guy down mercilessly. Oh, did I say mercilessly? I meant I'll be happy to accept your surrender.
Well, I have a good idea where the rest of their troops are now. Let's start getting them pinned in. For some reason, I can't fire at those guys in the water. I'm guessing it's a graphic glitch. The game thinks they're actually somewhere else. I mean, nothing's really stopping me from just continuing to cannon them, but since I don't know exactly when the stage's hard end is, I should probably be a bit more proactive. Okay, maybe a bit too proactive. Don't want my horsies to run into five enemies at once.
So, viewers, think my cavalry got some good use this map? Supply is secure, Union routed, another massive casualty disparity. Perfect scoreboard! It's been a while. Even my horses top the charts. One wounded officer, two promotions. Standard stuff. Apparently these advanced weapons I heard about in the stage intro were Frank Weston's and 20 pound parrots, both of which are pretty good. Oh hey, a medal. Point into medicine. Sir, yes, sir! Replace the officer. Yes, sir. So, my cavalry squads are two star now, so I'll get to talk about their second level perks in the next video. Got a grand battle coming up, so get ready for a barn burner. But for now, I'm out.